Hey, what's up guys, YouTube. So today's video is about uh, software engineer versus software developer. Um, let me introduce myself because some of you guys probably don't know much about me. I'm a software engineer or cloud DevOps, so cloud software engineer, uh, working on mostly cloud infrastructure, infrastructure as a code, CACD pipeline, system engineering, software engineering. But so so the, my total career in software engineering is gonna probably be about four and a half years. And before I turned into cloud DevOps software engineer, I was actually a software developer. And a software developer is more entails more about building applications, building developing applications, services, back end front end services to do something for business or client purposes. So software application could be B2B, business to business, or B2C, business to customer, you know, like mobile applications for clients, customers. What could be about backend services for like financial applications or Windows application for business. So I've worked on uh, developing Android application, iPhone app, and also uh, B2B, Windows, and Android application development using uh, Java for Android, C Sharp for Windows uh, desktop application and C plus plus C Sharp for backend services, and I've worked a little bit on the front end as well. But most of my uh, software development experience has been on the back end side, um, object oriented design, algorithm, data structure, um, design pattern, you know, Java, C Sharp, C plus plus are have been like my main thing when I was developer. And I wanted to talk to you about the difference between developer and engineer because I actually didn't know about this difference until after two years, I think a year and a, after, a, year and a half into uh, my full-time job. So my quick summary about my career, past career, I started doing a technical uh, network support technician at uh, ISP, Internet Service Provider in Japan, it's called NTT East. So it was basically troubleshooting the internet connectivity, Wi-Fi connectivity issue on a router. You have a router for internet, right, at home. So like TCP, blah, blah, blah stuff. Not much into like software too much. It's more just a network layer, just a configuration. A little bit like a ping and then like, like NS lookup and a little bit of a command line, but didn't know much about it. And then I did a software development internship at the BlackBerry, which was in C++ and then Java in Canada, because I went to Canada, Canadian University, computer science. And then I did a software, another software development uh, internship at Microsoft in Seattle, Redmond, United States. So I did uh, develop the um, full stack application development. So front end was uh, JavaScript, ASP, and then middleware was uh, .NET, C Sharp, and the back end was like, a, I think, Microsoft SQL Server. So that was, uh, still I was doing software development, like website, back end, database connection, like three tiers, uh, data application. And then after graduating from university, I started working at a startup for uh, Android mobile application and a Windows desktop. So I was doing uh, Windows, like Java, C Sharp, C++, all those languages, uh, object-oriented languages, which was kind of my favorite uh, design pattern. I, I liked it. And then somehow I uh, switched my job and then started working on microservices, which is kind of like a more trendy word. Microservice and container are kind of like a synonym. Microservice containerizing, uh, containerized application, and we were working on business B2B software delivery to big companies. So we were not really developing application, but we are developing software, like more like, you know, API gateway, kind of like uh, in a networking infrastructure wise, you know, you have, uh, you open up a browser, type URL, www.google.com, and google.com is a DNS name, like a domain name, and then you're gonna have like, you know, mapping between domain name and IP address. So you do a DNS and lookup, and the browser is gonna find IP address after contacting the DNS server, either in a local cache or a cache like a proxy server near your house, ISP. And then once you find a browser finds IP, then it goes to the server where Google website is hosted somewhere like, you know, a global distribution. So somewhere close by. And then 
a lot of like millions of people access Google, right? So you need to have a API gateway, a gateway that will handle millions and millions of traffic per second so that it can scale and accept the traffic. So that's an API gateway. It's kind of like an entry point to a, all the traffic coming in from clients. And that's also a gateway. That's why it's called a gateway. It's kind of like a gateway to protect the backend. So it's kind of like acting as a proxy server where it doesn't have, it doesn't expose individual backend nodes and servers to the clients, but it'll show you, give you a facade, front end facade proxy. And that's API gateway. And it does a lot of other stuff like API caching, throttling to protect backend by limiting the rate. You know, if you're trying to have a billion requests per second to try to shut down the server, the API gateway is going to limit your request, to, like kind of, kind of DDoS attack protection kind of thing. Uh, also, it does, you know, do a lot of different stuff, but that's basically what I was like working on. Uh, API gateway, and I started working like a cloud of DevOps in a CI CD pipeline, it's continuous integration and continuous continuous delivery, CI CD, this uh, thing. And then, you know, dockerizing stuff, microservice container. Um, and then I started working on cloud infrastructure platform, like pass platform as a service or infrastructure as a service. So really this is a time I started working on and in cloud like Kubernetes, OpenShift, AWS, Amazon Amazon Web Service, which is like the biggest uh, dom like a dominant dominating uh, player in the cloud uh, cloud uh, spectrum. AWS uh, AWS is dominating this entire cloud form, uh, cloud platforms like seventy percent share in the seventy billion dollars in revenue. AWS and then less than 25% per, 25% a shared among uh, Microsoft Azure, Google GCP, Google Cloud Platform, and then like VMware and Alibaba. But anyway, so I started working on the infrastructure as a code to build up the infrastructure like, you know, servers, networking layer, firewalls, API gateway, and proxy server, load balancer, DNS, blah, 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 blah. So I started working on that started working on YAML infrastructure as a, as a code, also dockerizing for CACD pipeline, testing and deployment, like rolling update of OpenShift and stuff like that. I know this is pretty detailed, uh, you know, terminology. So maybe even if you're a software developer, you, these terminologies might not make sense to you because this is like completely different topic, even in the computer science field. But anyways, so that's how I transitioned from software development to software engineering. And the software engineering entails a little bit bigger and a larger scope. So if you know about software development lifecycle, SDLC, software development lifecycle, you learn that in a software engineering course in university, bachelor. It starts from requirement gathering and then implementation and then testing and then maintenance. And then it goes back to requirement, implementation, like coding and then testing and then like testing, like unit testing, integration system, integration testing, system testing, user accept acceptance testing, and then maintenance, kind of like operation. And then go back to the requirement gathering again. And the software development life, life cycle, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so software engineer entails like engineering activity, entails requirement gathering, and the implementation, and the testing and operation. Everything comes under software engineering. Was a software development per se in a narrower term refers to more of a development implementation, like st second step after the requirement gathering, development and a testing. This is more for software developers' job. So I was doing that for like my first three jobs, two internships and a first job as a full time. Developing applications to do something. So it entails business logic, you know, application logic, and then. Two middle steps are development and a testing, right? And after that, it's maintenance, like operation. You know, make sure that applications or software are performing well, and the securities are all right, there's no like dropped connection and some bugs. If that happens, then the operation engineer, usually like kind of site reliability engineer or whatnot, needs to monitor traffic application health and then report it back to backend developers. 
So the operational side, requirement engineering, that part is not necessarily so much of a software developer's job. And also, so this is like kind of like a basic uh, difference that I understand about developer versus engineer, but there's another spectrum that I didn't know until half a year ago, which is system engineering. System engineering versus software engineering. Software engineering versus a system engineering. System engineering just pretty much about more OS level, low level thing. Just so you can think about network layer, Linux, kernel, OS. So system engineering is more about dealing with like Linux commands, like a batch shell script thing. Like you can think about, you know, easier commands would be like IF config, IP config, NS lookup, dig, um, what else? Ping is ICMP protocol, uh, networking. So like in you know, IP config, no, I, no, it's IP config. Uh, like uh, the what is it firewall firewall configuration, uh, not like network address translation, so IP traffic configuration, DNS, uh, route tape, route table, a lot of like processing files using like a find command or a grab command, um, stuff like that piping. So those shell Unix commands and system that's called a system level because it's more like operating 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 system level thing that's called a system engineering and they don't really deal with more abstracted high level languages like a java c sharp or c plus plus it is more for like directly related to os level low level stuff and why did i talk about system engineering because as a cloud devops devops entails software engineering and also system engineering because right now i'm working let's say if i'm working on aws to kind of spin up a launch uh, cloud infrastructure which entails uh, virtual networking with subnet with servers ec2 instances ip address dns cider block uh, firewall um, load balancer, database connection, API gateway, all sorts of stuff. This requires understanding the low level system level understanding like IP address, DNS, DNS records like NS records, address record, C name, canonical name. These like firewalls and stuff as well. This requires you to have understanding about system level engineering. Because when you debug about, oh, this instance cannot access this instance, you need to use like system engineering kind of commands, like shell, like Unix command to really debug and troubleshoot. Um, so, so, so that's how I transitioned from like a one software developer, you know, territory to software engineering, which is much broader. And then cloud devops, much which is much more broader and a more comprehensive CAC the pipeline thing. So as a cloud devops, I can understand and read and then develop code, just as a software developer like Python, Java, like initial development, and then I can work on testing and then putting in a pipeline using a CACD pipeline platform like tool like Jenkins or Team City, and then I can put it deploy it using you know platform. Uh, platform as a service, so like OpenShift, Kubernetes, and then I can set up an infrastructure and using monitoring tool in the, provided by AWS or Kubernetes to do operation engineering part aspect. So that's like a cloud DevOps. So see how it started off with software development, software developer, and then expanded like my territory or roles or responsibility to software engineering, which entails not just building application, but also deployment, uh, monitoring, debugging, much bigger scope to not only developing application, but also deploying it in the cloud so that it scales that like cloud DevOps field and the scope. That's kind of like my past uh, four and a half years of uh, my career trajectory and uh, this is to conclude that the difference between software development and software engineering. Software engineering could be much broader where software development entails just one aspect of a whole software engineering. 
And the cloud DevOps entails both software development cycle to uh, deployment to operation and everything, and also cloud architecture, not just the on-prem Windows desktop machine, Windows desktop application, mobile application, but install, deploy, and run those applications in the cloud in a scalable manner, which is what Cloud DevOps does to you know, provision those infrastructure. So I don't know, I think I talked a little bit too much, but this is the kind of stuff that I do every single day. And the uh, easier way to get started with kind of Cloud DevOps is that start with a certification. So you can start with the most common one, which is AWS among uh, Microsoft Azure or Google GCP. You can start with AWS because their share is like 70%. And the easiest one is AWS Practitioner Certificate. And after that, you can start with AWS Solution Architect or AWS Developer Certificate. Either way, Solution Architect Associate requires you to have like minimum like one, one year-ish uh, hands-on experience in AWS. But I got the Solution Architect Associate Certificate with um, less than one year of AWS per se, specifically AWS experience less than one year. I have been uh, working on like touched on like Kubernetes, OpenShift, other clouds thing. So total my cloud experience more than one year, but AWS per se, I was like doing it with like less than uh, eight or six month uh, uh, experience, but I studied like two months and then I got Solution Architect Associate. So yeah. Um, did I cover everything or did I cover too much about, you know, everything? <laughs> yeah, let me know uh, if, you have any if you have any questions. Um, I could talk on and on about the cloud because I love cloud DevOps and uh, infrastructure scalability. Three C's of cloud is, you know, complexity, you know, cube of cloud. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.